welcome to today's lesson. And in today's lesson, we'll be talking about one very important topic that would help us to appreciate most things we'll be doing in mass in the coming days. So we are starting with relations, mappings, and then functions. So what's a relation? A relation is something you have heard in real conversation. You've heard about a relationship, how to relate to one another. So when we talk about relation or relate, a relation, we are looking at just a connection between two sets. In a relation, we are looking at a connection between two sets. Two sets. So one word stands out here. A set, set is just a collection of numbers or groups of things. So groups of things compared to other sets. So you could have a set of numbers, you could have a set of uh, nouns, you could have a set of many other things. Alright, so mathematically we have some important terminologies that are very useful for our understanding of relations. We have the first one called the domain. The domain is also called the input or the independent independent variable so the domain has to do with all the values that go into the relation all the values that go into the relation are called the domain then we also have the core domain which speaks of all the values that come out from the relation so in this case in this case owing to this the core domain is now called the output and it could also be referred to as the dependent variable. Now, I think we'd have to look at this example to explain why this is dependent and that is independent. So let's take a relation between countries and some names. So right here in this first set, we have some countries here. We have Ghana, Nigeria, China, and then America. Then we have some names here, Kwesi, Ama, Jet Li, Kwame, Chinedu, Bruce Lee, Will Smith, and then Amaka. So we have names of various countries. So let's try and connect them. I would want to connect Ghana to Ama. Ghana to Ama and then Nigeria, Chinedu. Chinedu, China, I have Jet Li. Yeah, and in America, I have Will Smith. So there's an American name, China, and then a Ghanaian name, Ama. So all this, we could now call this set of values the domain. Domain. And then we'll call this the co- Domain. So you now get why we call this the input value. So when you input Ghana, you are going to get all these names out. When you input Ghana, you get Ama. When you input Nigeria, you get Chinedu coming out as uh, as a name. And you get when you input America, you get an output of those names. So we have the core domain called the outputs, and then we have the domain, which is the input values. And as you can see, all the values in the core domain are dependent on the values in in the domain so the values in the core domain are called the dependent variables or values and then the variables or the names in this set are the independent all right so now let's see a quite a, some some slight difference actually the core domain has another name called the range so the range marking this out color coding this with blue to just put some slight difference sometimes you see some books just leave the core domain as the range but then there's a slight difference between the core domain and then the range this is a, this is a difference now when it comes to the range the range tells us the values the exact values that the the, the variables or the values in the domain are mapping to. 
but the core domain tells us all the possible values that can be found. So for example, as you can see, the core domain, we have all these values, we can have Kwesi, so a Ghanaian can either be Ama or can be Kwesi, a Nigerian can be Chinedu or can be Amaka. So all the possible values, all the possible values are captured in the core domain, but the range tells us those specific values that have been pointed to. So in this case, owing to this, we can now say the range will be from here. So this side. So this number is, okay, I think I've left Kwame out. So the range will now be Ama, Jetli, Chinedu, and then Rosemead. So they are the ones making up the range. So Ama, Jetli, Chinedu, and then Rosemead. They make up the range. And all these values here make up the code domain. So we can say, so difference between the range and the code domain. So the code domain is all the possible outputs values. Whereas the range is the exact values or the exact output values. So can we therefore say that the range can we therefore say that the range is a subset of the core domain very important. So the range is a subset of the code domain. So as you can see, the names here, Ama, Jetli, Tinedu, and Nosmith are subsets of all the various names over here. Now let's see how, so the next thing we'll talk about is how relations are defined or how they can be, you can, how they can be expressed or they can be seen. Now you could see relations as a correspondence between the domain and the code domain. Just as we have here, you can see that we have a set and another set here, which is just a correspondence. So let's see. So the first one can look like this. The first one will be something like this. So we have this. So X. So we have this. Uh, we have X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So you could see them in this kind of correspondence. Or you could see relations just written as ordered pairs. So if we look at that, relative to this, you could see Ghana goes to Ama. So Ghana, comma, Ama. Ghana, Ama. Then the next one will be Nigeria, Chinedu. Nigeria, Chinedu, China, Jetli, China, Jetli, and America, Bosmith, America, Will Smith. Right, so we could put them. So if we, even if we were given numbers, we could have something like zero, one, maybe two, four, and maybe three, six, and then four, eight. All right. So this could be written like this, or we could also have it in a graph form. For example, if we have something like this, a relation can be written in a graph form where we have this and maybe we have something like this so this really alright or we could also have it written as an equation 
So x is equal to y squared, or x squared is equal to y. x squared is equal to y. So it's an equation. x squared is equal to y. Maybe x is equal to 2y. Or y is equal to 2 plus x. So it could be given to you as an equation. It could be given to you as a correspondence. You could see it as a graph. As we go on further, we see the various types of relations, the various types of graphs in our studies. Or it could be written as ordered pairs. All right, so next thing is to talk about the various types of relations. The first here is a one-to-one -one relation. In this, so let me label, so we have the domain or the dependent value and then the co, sorry, the independent value, the domain, the independent value, and then the co-domain is the dependent value. Now, so we have one, two, three, three, six, nine. So one to one relation, what do you think? Just as the name suggests, one value from the domain maps directly to one and only one value in the co domain. So let's see this. So in this case, one is going to map to three, two is going to map to six, and then three goes to nine. So this is a one to one relation. The next one is one to many relation. In this case, one value has the probability of one value in the domain has the probability of mapping to the domain has a probability of mapping to more than one in a co domain all right so we have so let's say one goes to three and this same one goes to six so one to many or let's say two goes to six and this same two goes to nine. So sometimes, so as you can see, if one function exhibits that trait, the name goes for them. So one to many relation, one goes to three, the same one goes to six. So in this kind of relation, we call it a one to many relation. Next one, many to one. In this case, as the name suggests, we have many values in the domain mapping to one in the co domain. So let's try this. You could have many, so many. So many going to one. So as you can see, A and B are all mapping to C. Then C is going to, let's say, just, I think this two, A, B mapping to X, sorry. A, B mapping to X actually captures the concept. So many in the domain mapping to just one in the code domain so many sorry code domain and then code domain very simple or as you can see that the dependence the dependent and then the independent set so now this third one is many to many relation many to many relation over here you see many in the domain mapping to many in the co domain as well so as you can see a is mapping to y uh, okay let's use b b is mapping to y mapping to z at the same time and this same b is mapping to y a is also mapping to y so many so a lot of sketches where so many to many relations many to one relations one to many relations one to one relations so this actually sums up our introduction to the topic on relations, mapping and functions. So see you in the next video. Bye.